Greetings, my dear viewers. It is I, Drehon, and welcome back to another video in this little mini series. Uh, D and Dealing, as I have been calling it uh, in the titles. Uh, it's not really much, I just take a look at strange things within Dungeons and Dragons and tell you how to best deal with them. I've mostly been covering the overpowered spells, uh, as well as some weird, uh, odd features inside classes that somewhat don't make sense. Uh, today I am actually dealing with uh, a controversial topic, the DMPC. Ah, collective gasp! Drehan, why are you talking about this nightmare? Don't you know DMPCs are bad? No DM should be playing as a character. They are the DM. And yes, I agree. I have heard the stories. I know what you guys are talking about. The Dungeon Master is already in control of the game world. They have complete control over situations, monsters, as well as the bosses and the NPCs. NPCs should already be considered the NPC because that's how they are designed. They are characters that the Dungeon Master controls. That should be the end of the discussion right there. However, I think we can actually improve how DMPCs are used within Dungeons & Dragons as well as other TTRPG RPGs. Um, so, uh, with these four tips that I'm going to give you today, uh, I'm going to try to improve how people see the DMPC and hopefully inspire you Dungeon Masters not to play the DMPC like in many TTRPG horror stories and you yourself becoming the main villain in the next horror story. So, let's go ahead and get into these four tips that I have for you today. To start things off, you need to avoid the player's handbook. Just throw that right out the window. We are instead going to be using the Monster Manual and Tasha's Cauldron of Everything. Pages 142 to 147 specifically. The Sidekick Class. This is actually the example that Wizards of the Coast gives us for a good DMPC. The only thing that we should be using to create our own DMPC. The sidekick. Now, according to page 142, when creating a sidekick, uh... More often than not, you're going to have to decide who is controlling this character. It's going to be either one of the players who has an additional character, one of the players who wants to play a character that is more simple, a simpler character than what is found in the player's handbook, or you the dungeon master. Now, you also have to keep in mind that the action economy is still a thing. So, this does increase the amount of time in combats, but it still could be useful. Especially since the sidekick class is also experience-based, much like all the other classes. So, yes, you will be taking some of the experience points from encounters. 
But like all encounters, the experience points needs to be divided equally amongst your players. So if you have four players and a sidekick, and you just killed an enemy that is worth 100 hit points, make sure you divide that equally. That is 20 experience points between all five. Not 50 going to your DMPC, and your players getting stuck with only 10. Or less. Anyways, just avoid doing that part. The main thing is with the sidekicks is that you start off with a base stat. The stat block needs to be a creature that is a challenge rating of one half or less. Which is still pretty diverse. Challenge rating one half, one fourth, one eighth, and zero is going to be your choices for these sidekicks. And then you will give them the uh, sidekick class depending on what it is. An expert, a spellcaster, or a wizard. Oh, but Drahon! What if we're doing a spellcaster? We're going to need the player's handbook in order to lock up these spells, says the sarcastic viewer. And to that I give you an equally sarcastic answer. Spellbook spell cards! I'm actually using these in my own campaign that I'm running. I give out the spellbook spell cards to each of my players, depending on what their spell list provides. Yes, some of my players are sharing spells, but that's besides the point. It's still a very useful tool, and I would recommend using it yourselves as a dungeon master, controlling one of these sidekicks using the spellcaster sidekick class, as well as any other monster that you have that does use a spell list. Grab the spells that are necessary for your monster and just use those. That way you're not rifling through the player's handbook or any other source material to try to find your spells. Make things simpler on yourself and on your players and grab yourself some spell books, spell cards. I've just been getting the baseline sets that I can find at my local card shop. I have so far gotten the Arcane set as well as the Druid and the Bard set, since those are the classes that I am working with, with my current party. Anyway, moving on to our next tip. Your, if you decide to create a DMPC that is overpowered, like say a level 20 Paladin, and it is tagging along with your party. That DMPC should only count as a teacher, not as a main character. That is the basis of some of these horror stories that I have been hearing. You dungeon masters for some dumb, stupid reason want to create a novel instead of an adventure for your players. Not for you. Your players are the stars of the show. You are just the setting. You have no say in the matter. Yes, your fun is important too. But make sure, for Pete's sake, that your players are having as much fun as you are. This is a stage for your players. Your players are not your puppets. You are sending puppets after them. So... Your DMPC needs to be able to be a mentor figure for your players. That is the best thing I can come up with. Basically, have them be a tutorial instructor when you first meet 
the DMPC. That's that's about it. Just have them stay long enough for the players to learn how their characters operate. And only let them return if the players need a little bit of guidance or they have a new skill that they need to learn. When there are encounters with a DMPC, after a certain level, I would recommend level 4 or level 5, make those encounters rare. Make that play DMPC scarce. They should not be showing up again for a long time. That's actually what I am currently doing in the campaign I'm running with my family. I have a NPC known as Omak Glia. He is a traveling merchant. So, that being said, they're not going to see Omak that often. If at all, after this first chapter has been completed within the campaign. Once that's done, Omak has no need to be near them and will go away and won't return unless completely necessary. And that was, that's what I recommend for you, my dear fellow Dungeon Masters. Make them scarce. Get rid of them as soon as they cease being useful to your party. That's it. That's, that's the main topic of this video. They shouldn't be there that long. Get rid of them as soon as they become useless. They're only useful until a certain point. Once that point has been met, get rid of them. At that point, they have overstayed their welcome. Omak has almost overstayed his welcome with my party. But they're not quite at the right level yet, and I want them at the right level before I have Omak leave them. And that is the same thing I recommend to you viewers. Once they hit the right level, get rid of your DMPC, that should be the end of it, until it is necessary again. Like, for example, your players are insistent on taking on a ancient red dragon. Throw in an DMPC that is experienced with these things, help them get through it, and then say goodbye to that DMPC. That's it. That's all you need to do. Uh, moving on to tip number three, don't bully your party. I'm serious. Don't be the that guy DM. That is another common thing that happens in these horror stories. The DMPC treats the party like they are garbage. You're supposed to be encouraging the party. Don't put them down and take their lunch money. Help them. Make them grow. Encourage growth within your party. Have them learn side by side even. Your party needs to actually like the DMPC long enough for them to just be gone. Have the PC be tolerable. Don't make it intolerable. An intolerable DMPC is going to be hated. Now, if this DMPC is meant to be intolerable, and it's supposed to act as a, a mini-boss, then sure, go ahead and do that. Make it a mini-boss. Have the party defeat the DMPC right when they are ready to. It's perfect. I like it. Go for that. Just, if it's supposed to be an ally, don't be that guy. 
that is such a common trope in these horror stories I have heard. It's annoying to hear, and it's probably annoying to experience. So just don't do it. So how do we make the DMPC likable? Well, that's my fourth tip. Make it fun. Uh, throw in a silly voice. With Omak Glear, I gave him a pretty silly voice. Hi, the name is Omak Glear. Just do something like that. That's all you need. A silly voice, quirky personality. Just don't make them... A butt face. Make them likable. Give them a, a sort of silly voice. The personality will work. Give them a quirk of some kind. Uh, uh, I mean, Omak Glear is... Is a quirk in of itself. The name is a, his quirk. I'll let you guess why it's his quirk. <laughs> but... Yeah, that's, that's what I did with my own DMPC. He's just there. He's a little goofy. And I'm going to have an even more goofy DMPC in the future when the story calls for it. But not until then. And speaking of till then, that is all the time I have for you today, my dear viewers. So I'm going to leave you with this little bit of information for the DMPC and how to actually work with them. I hope this has been helpful. It probably isn't because my IIR, IRL charisma is pretty shoddy. But nonetheless, I hope that this does somehow help you in the long run. Until next time... This has been Drehan, and I have some videos to make in preparation for the Christmas holiday. So, until then, my dear viewers, I am offline.